Welcome to the One Chart at a Time video series. I'm your host, John Schwabish. Now we're in the midst of learning about how to visualize geographic data. And for many of us, we just take a map and we add circles or colors or lines to plot our data on, on a standard map. But for sometimes showing a standard map doesn't really work and we might wanna try other shapes on our map or the entire map itself. And so Laz Gamio from the Washington Post is going to explain what the tile grid map is how it works and some considerations for when it might work, when it might not work, and when you could add even more data to your map. So Laz, over to you. Hey John, thank you for having me. Uh, so a tile grid map is most often used when you want to display geographic data and the geography of these um, areas is not necessarily the most important thing. Uh, it's used best when you have a, a particular fact about a place, whether it be a category or a value. Uh, and what matters is more what that value is rather than the size of the un underlying geography. So here's a quick example from the New York Times. This is showing how many states have completed certifying their votes. So in this map, you can see that all of the states are the exact same size. So in a regular geograph geographic map, Texas would be much bigger than Rhode Island, but you know the actual geographic size does not matter in this context. What matters is the fact that Rhode Island is a state and it has completed certifying its votes the same as Ohio and Montana and North Dakota and Florida. And they're all the same size because what the, the fact that you're trying to communicate is the number of states and uh, you know whether they fall into a category or not. Uh, one of the main challenges with, with, with tile grid maps is maintaining a, a sort of familiarity that people have with um, traditional geographic maps. And it's a really big challenge because, because you're sort of making all the shapes the same size, it's really difficult to maintain the topology that you would have in a geographic map. So sometimes you get kind of, you know, you get odd uh, border issues, right? For example, in this case, South Carolina is west of North Carolina, but there's really no way around it because you have to sort of make things look the way they look. Um, there's a really good um, uh, uh, blocks uh, block, I think, uh, by Jane Pong, which goes through the many, many different layouts uh, employed by various newsrooms to, to sort of organize U.S. states in um, in this in this grid format and it's it's sort of everybody has their own you know homebrew um you know apart from this layout you know you can show a value um in in, in you know for each of these tiles and sometimes you can also just uh include uh data in them right so a big um a big thing that people do now is something called a chartergram where instead of just shading a, t a state's tile in a certain color, you can just put an entire chart in there. So you can see state by state trends in a really information dense um, layout. Uh, people have all, you know, you can also have a little bit more fun. Uh, the post did this a while ago, which is, it is a categorical um, tile grid map, uh, but they used like, you know, this story was about, um, I think driver or driver's license requirements and they actually use the state's sample driver's license in place of like a regular colored tile. Uh, so, you know, the sky is the limit. And, you know, the, this technique does not just apply to, um, to the US. Uh, you know, John, for example, on his website has examples for a European tile grid map and also a world tile grid map, which, you know, you can see the topology issues here where you know, you've got a place like Europe, where, which maintains some level of, uh, you know, geographic, uh, you know, cohesion. But then, you know, North and North America is kind of messy and the Caribbean is crazy because it's just a string of islands. Um, but yeah, you can see it's it's a fun one. It's, it's useful in a lot of cases. Uh, and I hope you have a fun time making that. And thanks to Laz for that great explanation of the tile grid map, when it works, when it doesn't work, some things to consider. So a map like that, you can really just draw. You don't really even need a fancy data visualization tool. I make my tile grid maps in Microsoft Excel. But whatever tool you use, always keep in mind your audience, keep in mind what message you're trying to convey to them. So until next time, this has been the One Chart at a Time video series. Thanks so much for tuning in.